It was Valentine's Day when I skipped to the mailbox, excited for cards from my friends. But there, nestled between bills, was a fancy red envelope addressed to my dearest. I grinned, assuming it was from Timmy, a boy who pulled my pigtails. But inside weren't chocolates or a cheesy store-bought card. Just photos of me walking home last week, taken in secret spots like behind the old oak where I cut through the woods. I shuddered, dropping them like they might bite. Who took these? Why follow and watch me? In the notes, little paper hearts with creepy poems. Roses are red, violets are blue. I watch you from the shadows. Why can't I have you? My breath quickened as I spun around, suddenly feeling eyes on me, but nobody was there. Must be some stupid prank, I told myself. But all day at school, I imagined a dark figure lurking outside the windows, tracing my every move. At home, I hid the photos under my bed, afraid mom would freak. The next weeks went by quietly until the night when I woke with my stomach in knots. My room was pitch black, but the hairs on my neck prickled as if someone loomed by my bed, reaching with greedy fingers. Heart drumming, I scanned with panicked breaths, but only saw my teddy bear sitting innocently. Finally, I sank into uneasy dreams. The next morning, my gut lurched again, because sitting on my pillow was a little blood-smeared note folded into a heart. Meet me in the park at midnight, if you dare. I wanted to cry out, but fear choked me. Who had crept to my bedside, leaving this wild note inches from my face as I slept? I begged mom to let me stay home. She sighed, thinking I wanted to skip a test, and hurried me off. Those seven dreary hours, I knew a stalker was out there someplace, tracing my steps, hungering for my panic. My friends asked why I seemed so freaked out, but I just shook my head, scared to even peek out the windows. By the time mom drove me home, every little sound made my pulse race. I flung open my closet, then peered under my bed, half hoping to catch the creep tormenting me. But I found only stillness, until I saw my teddy bear guard, usually on my pillow, now slumped on the floor. A sticky, dark smile was smeared all across his very face. Someone had been here, maybe still lurked close. I cried and begged mom to keep me home again, but she just soothed me, promising upgraded locks and alarms. But nothing eased the hollow pit inside as I lay squinting into late night shadows. Clutching my stained burr, I waited for the morning light. When my alarm jolted me awake, my sheets were soaked with sweat. With trembling hands, I slowly opened my closet again, but everything seemed in place. No signs of an intruder. I started to breathe until I pulled on my sneakers by the door. Inside one was a tiny box wrapped with sparkly paper and ribbons. My hands shook violently as I opened it to uncover a gruesome surprise, a shriveled, bloody human heart. My thoughts raced as I handed on a bold plan. I had to end this tonight. As the old clock tower told twelve, 
I crept to the silent park, clutching the sparkly hatchet that kept hidden away for emergencies. Wrapped in shadows, I waited, baiting the predator to become prey. My trap was set. This would end now on my terms, even if violence was required. As footsteps cracked on frost behind me, I whirled around with weapon raised, ready to strike. But instead of some shadowy psycho killer, I came face to face with baby-faced Timmy, eyes white with a bouquet of roses. Before I could stop myself, I swiped the hatchet down, slashing open the boy's outstretched hand. He howled in shock, the roses scattering as blood dripped black onto the frozen dirt. I staggered backwards, shame and confusion crashing over me like a wave. Had sweet innocent Timmy been my stalker all this time, dropping notes and organs to toy with my head? Eyes flooding with tears, I stuttered apologies while ripping off my scarf to wrap his wound. Suddenly I was attacked from behind. Gasping, I collapsed to the ground on my hands and knees. As the world went blurry, I saw a tall, dark stranger drag poor Timmy's lifeless body into the woods. Timmy's blood left a smear on the dirt like a horrific, bloody arrow. Then everything went black. Later, I woke up shaken with fear, my head pounding. I was tied up tight to a chair in an unfamiliar, filthy basement. A naked bulb hung from the ceiling, swaying a little. It created scary moving shadows on the dirt floor and crumbling brick walls surrounding me. As panic flooded through me, the walls appeared to creep closer and closer. Then I saw lots of pictures of myself taped everywhere, walking, laughing with friends, even some taken through my bedroom window while I slept. A cold breeze made my arms chilly when a metal door opened with a creak. A big guy with menacing knives twirled them, and my heart raced as the silver blades flashed. I cowered as he came closer, and I could almost smell his bad breath. There was dried blood under his rough fingernails. I realized he was the creepy admirer who had harbored dark fantasies about me for years, and I was stuck in his hideout.